I'm now joined on the line by former Mead great and football analyst Colm O'Rourke. Colm, if I can firstly touch on the GPA's proposals for changes to the All-Ireland Football Championship to a Champions League format, with seeding decided on your league finish, do you think that the current Football Championship system is in need of overhaul, and do you think that the Ulster Council will reject any motion that would jeopardise the only real competitive provincial championship? Yeah, well, Ulster generally says no to everything in the GEA. I've been on plenty of committees who have brought out proposals in the past on various things, and, and Normally they were scuppered if they ran contrary to any influence from Ulster. So I don't think there's any chance that any change in the championship format, which should involve a change to either the Ulster Football yeah. Championship or probably the Munster Hurling Championship, if it was hurling, uh, would ever have a chance of getting through. Yeah, And uh, Cullum, if you look at each championship, Linster Dublin are pulling away from once powerhouses Kildare, Mead and Leash. Do you personally feel that the standard of football play is going back into one-time contenders or do you believe the dubs are just too far ahead of the chasing pack? Uh, well, I think Dublin are a long way ahead of everybody in, in terms of organisation and personnel. Plus to have great individual players, as yeah. good of individual players as ever played for Dublin and maybe even better. So I think that the football the standard of football in, in the counties that you have mentioned there, yeah. Mead and Kildare and Leash, has certainly dropped alarmingly in the last five years, uh, while I'd say Dublin have uh, improved their standards. So one going forward and uh, the rest going back leaves a massive gap in Leinster. Yeah, and Colm, if I can turn our attention to Munster, where Kerry ousted Cork after replay, which many feel that Cork left it behind him on the first outing. And while Tipperary, with, with the likes of Stephen O'Brien, Colin O'Rear and Conor Sweeney, and Michael Quinlan and Clare with the likes of Clundigads, Gary and Shane Brennan and Cratlow's Podge Collins and Dubbeg's David Tuberty, all fantastic footballers in their own right. Do you think that Tipperary and Clare's progress is suffocating being trapped in the same system as Cork and Kerry? Well, I think that uh, all all smaller counties have been suffocated for the last 100 and whatever number of years the GE has been around and particularly in the last 50 years, I think that uh, I'm always amazed that smaller counties who haven't won anything are willing to tolerate a system which has continually preferred riches on the rich. I think that uh, uh, a properly organised B Championship or some form of B Championship would be better. Even better still would be uh, a 311 system where uh, you could uh, have promotion and relegation and uh, meritocracy as you have in club football. That's the proper system, but we're welded into an outdated, outmoded provincial system and uh, a lot of people aren't willing, unwilling to change away from that. And of course, a lot of it is to do with power and money and things like that rather than fairness. Yeah, and Colm, speaking about Cork, do you feel the losses of Aidan Walsh, Adam Cadigan and uh, Kieran Sheehan to Aussie rules are too much of a blow for Cork to be able to overturn Kerry? And do you feel it was the right time for Brian Cooper to go? Well, Brian Cooper shipped a lot of criticism. I'd say it's almost impossible to run the Cork team because they certainly have a different type of mentality towards club fixtures in Cork than nearly anywhere else and they just keep playing away. So I would say that no manager in Cork would be able to get anything like the access to the our players as the Wooding, probably Kerry or Dublin are the successful counties. So there's a balance to be struck between players playing with clubs and counties and I think the successful counties, most of the county players sort of ditch their clubs for whatever number of months of the year they're involved with the county teams, whereas Cork and some other counties don't do that. Who's to say that that's wh- which is the better system? Because uh, the, in Cork, certainly there is, is more activity with clubs than there would be in most counties. And Colm, if I can bring you on to Connacht, where Mayo claimed five in a row, Galway made progress under Kevin Walsh and have some really talented young players coming of age, while Roscommon flattered to deceive, deceive despite all their potential. Do you think with Kevin McStay coming on board with Roscommon next year, that for the first time in almost a decade, we could see three teams with a realistic chance of fighting out for a Connacht crown? Yes, I think uh, Connacht is certainly much more competitive than, say, Leinster. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, but in reality, uh, Mayo are still a long way ahead. Like the, the, the Mayo ended up drawing an All-Ireland semi-final with the eventual All-Ireland champions. That's the level that they have been operating at for the last number of years. Uh, they haven't been more than one or two points away from winning in All-Ireland. So, like, even though Connacht is still competitive, uh, Mayo are quite ahe- ahead of the posse, and there's no doubt about that. There is still a substantial gap, even in the Connacht semi-final with Galway this year. Mayo really were quite a, a bit ahead of Galway, even though Galway made a right match of it. Yeah, and in Ulster column, Byron Monaghan overturned Donegal for provincial success, while Tyrone got back on the track 
back after an early defeat to go all the way to the semi-final and in my opinion if they had taken two of their at least three glorious goal chances would have beaten Kerry while traditional powerhouses Derry down and Armagh had a year to forget do you believe that the three latter teams I mentioned there face a worrying future in the years to come? Yeah I think so well what's happening in Ulster seems to be that it's uh, regressed from former highs when Tyrone and Armagh certainly were All-Ireland contenders every year it looks now as if uh, there's more competition in Ulster albeit at a lower level so almost every county in Ulster uh, maybe with the exception of Armagh would probably think they have a serious chance of winning the Ulster Championship obviously that's good good for Ulster but if you have so many teams in contention for a provincial championship it generally means that none of them are outstanding teams even though Tyrone did show signs that uh, they had the footballers to uh, probably progress substantially and they did progress a lot this year as the the year went on what it did show of course with Tyrone and other teams is that if you give teams uh, uh, a good spread of games throughout the summer a team can improve a lot but uh, the haphazard nature of uh, Gaelic football and small number of games over the summer months and especially for teams that win or lose their provincial championship game and then the qualifiers they have no game then for uh, maybe eight months so like, there's no way for any county to make improvement with that type of system and finally Colm if I can touch once more on the All-Ireland Champions Dublin driven by a superb Kieran Kilkenny this year I felt was player of the year and with the firepower of Bernard Brogue and Dear McConnelly and Paul Flynn do you feel that they will have the intensity and hunger to put back to back championships together and is it only really Mayo, Tyrone and Kerry that have the potential to overturn them I think that's about all that have any chance of overturning them it's, it's becoming a more and more elitist system I think Dublin are still a long way ahead of most counties uh, I think that they have, the possibility is that Dublin will get better because they have a bigger panel of good players and they have outstanding players and uh, they're at the right age as well and I, I think the future for Dublin is very bright considering the very good under 21 teams and the minor teams that they've had for the last few years so I think Dublin can ship the sort of retirements of the likes of Alan Brogan and others and, and will we'll get better uh, Colm thanks a million for taking the call and hopefully we sure. can speak to you sometime in the near future thanks a million very welcome bye bye bye